that the role of glucose control is equally important. And there they list out which are the drugs which are maximum lower the glucose, next efficacy and the least efficacy. They emphasize on lifestyle modification also to achieve the weight uh, for every individual and underlies the importance of controlling other comorbidities. But in the low income countries, we must prioritize diabetes control and access to treatment. Today, we will discuss uh, the role of uh, combination in the management of the diabetes. And particularly, we will share the official position of very important uh, scientific societies like ADA, AACE, and the IDF. And we have uh, three uh, well known, very well, well uh, famous uh, speakers with, who will cover each of these. Uh, uh, topic. The first is Dr. Mohan from India. Uh, the second one is uh, Professor Sismar from Thailand. And the third is uh, Professor uh, Leila from uh, uh, Emirates. Thank you, uh, Professor Serilio. Uh, so the, uh, my summary is from the American Diabetes Association and the EASD about use of combination therapy. So over the years, uh, therapies have evolved and today combination therapies have come to stay. So the ADA and the ASD clearly lay out for the treatment of diabetes. If you have atherosclerotic heart disease or you have heart failure or chronic kidney disease, there are drugs which have advantage and top of the list would come the GLP-1 receptor analogs and the SGLT2 group of drugs. But then the ADA also has a big section on if you want weight loss, then you would have a different priority. And there again, GLP-1s and SGLT-2s would come in. But then they also correctly emphasize that the role of glucose control is equally important. And there they list out which are the drugs which are maximum lower the glucose, next efficacy and the least efficacy. And there they point out that drugs like sulfonylureas and metformin are still among the best drugs for glucose control. So in summary, glucose control remains central in the hierarchy of treatment of type 2 diabetes and we should try to achieve the targets which are set, whether it is HbA1c of 7%, blood pressure control, cholesterol control and also weight control. We have to choose the patient who is in front of us and if the patient needs weight loss or has chronic kidney disease, heart failure or atherosclerotic heart disease, we can use the newer drugs. But we should keep in mind that glucose control is still very important and that drugs like metformin and sulfonylureas are still very important for control of diabetes. And many of these countries, especially in the low and middle income countries, they are the only drugs which people can afford. So access to treatment and affordability of treatment should also be kept in mind when treating type 2 diabetes. Hi, I'm Dr. Sirinard from Bangkok, Thailand. So my part is the summary of the AACE guideline. For those of you who are not familiar with AACE, this is the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology, and they have the comprehensive type 2 diabetes management algorithm released in 2023. And in this guideline, um, more or less almost similar to ADA guidelines, but they emphasize on lifestyle modification also to achieve the weight uh, for every individual and underlies the importance of controlling other comorbid diseases such as hypertension and dyslipidemia. And when it comes to hemoglobin A1C target, they set the target at less than 6.5% if it can be achieved, achieved safely by a lot of our patients, which is a little bit different from other guidelines saying that hemoglobin A1C of less than 7% is generally recommended. And when it comes to the combination of the treatment, uh, they propose if 
the A1C, initial hemoglobin A1C of more than 7.5%, two agents should be used uh, simultaneously from the beginning. And if hemoglobin A1C is higher, such as more than 9%, or you want to lower it more than 1.5% at one point of time, you may want to consider up to three medications. And of course, when signed with other guidelines, access to medications uh, in terms of accessibility, tolerability, and the cost of the medication to be considered. And in the low-income countries or the limited access, limited budgets, the second medication, apart from the uh, in addition to the metformin as a first line, we may consider the thiazolidine dione or sulfonylurea. So to summarize my presentation today, I can say that type 2 diabetes is really a complex disease and a challenging disease. And we are always facing a big problem to control the diabetes uh, pa diabetic patient. So new medicine offer many benefits. But in the low-income countries, we must prioritize diabetes control and access to treatment without overlooking the value of older and affordable medication such as sulfonylurea. So, according to the last IDF guidelines, we should always start by life life uh, lifestyle modification plus metformin and then consider SGLT2 inhibitors plus other blood glucose lowering uh, uh, therapy such as uh, sulfonylurea. Combination therapy in the early stage is recommended to have a better control early in the history of type 2 diabetes and to avoid therapeutic inertia. Thank you. Excellent. And uh, I hope that uh, I, I want to thank all the speakers and uh, who is interested in uh, having a longer explanation of what has is presented. I will invite you to have a look at the, the full webinar, which will be soon available on YouTube. See you next time for the fourth episode. Bye. Post your questions in the comment box. The experts will reply and the channel secretariat will post their feedback. Unlock full ACT 2D episode series. Click the access links in the description box below.